Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're going to be reading Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 43. Psalm 38, we finished 37 yesterday, finally. And Proverbs chapter 10, verses 8 and 9. We're getting to the parts where we are cutting down on the Proverbs to only like one and two at a time now. Where at the beginning we was reading several at a time. So, you know, when we get towards farther into it, we get, you know, less proverbs like this. The farther into it we go. So in Mark today, let's see what Jesus is going to be doing today. We'll be talking about pretty much one, one area today, and that'll be Jesus raises a dead girl and heals a sick woman. Two things. Alright. Yeah, that's two things, but it's mentioned together in the title. Okay, so let's begin here. This is the one where he heals the woman that has had bleeding for 12 years. And she just said, you know, if I just, he was in a crowd. And he knew that someone touched him, even though he was in a very, very crowded place. She just touched the edge of his garment. And she knew if she just touched the edge of his cloak, she'd be healed. And she was. And Jesus knew she touched him out of all those people. But he asked, who touched me, just to see if she would admit to it. And she did. He told her, you know, because your faith, you are healed. And then the little girl, she died, but Jesus brought her back to life. You'll see. That was Jarius' daughter. All right, so let's begin with Mark. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jarius came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. This is one of the synagogue leaders. Where was Jarius? Was he pleading for Jesus' life when the other teachers of the law and stuff, the other leaders were pleading for him to be killed? Was he on the people, was he on Jesus' side? You know, I just wonder these things. I know it was meant for Jesus to go through this, but I just wonder who was on his side and who wasn't, you know. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. He knew Jesus could do it. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Non-stop. Been bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. You know how some doctors like to experiment. And back then it would have been a lot, lot worse. They'd done some crazy experiments, especially on women. And they weren't always pleasant. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, when she touched his clothes, the bleeding stopped immediately. And she felt it in her body. And she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized 
that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? The disciples were kind of in awe at this, probably, because there was like a massive crowd there. People were touching everybody, pushing through, you know. The disciples are like, You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. He knew. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. You know he knew. He just wanted to see if she would admit it. And she did. And you see what he told her. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jarius, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead. She was 12 years old, by the way. They said, why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. And of course, they're going to think Jesus is a nut. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. You know, they think he's crazy. We know she's dead. we just seen her. And he says she's not dead. <laughs> okay, she's not dead. Well, they won't be laughing for too long. Because after he put them out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in there, who went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. But I'm sure the people outside went and spread the word very quickly, like most people did when something happened that we're told not to tell. And that's where we're going to stop with Mark today. And now we're going to go to our song, which is Psalm 38 today, a song of David, a petition. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Your arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down on me. Because of your wrath, there is no health in my body. There is no soundness in my bones because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome. Because of my sinful folly, I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All my longings lie open before you, Lord. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pounds, my strength fails me, even the light has gone from my eyes. My friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds. My neighbors stay far away. Those who want to kill me set their traps. Those who would harm me talk of my ruin. 
All day long they scheme and lie. I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the mute who cannot speak. I have become like one who does not hear, whose mouth can offer no reply. Lord, I wait for you. You will answer, Lord my God, for I said, do not let them gloat or exalt themselves over me when my feet slip. For I am about to fall, and my pain is ever with me. I confess my inequity. I am troubled by my sin. Many have become my enemies without cause. Those who hate me without reason are numerous. Those who repay my good with evil lodge accusations against me. Though I seek only to good, do what is good, Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to help me, my God and my Savior. And that was Psalm 38 of David, a petition. And now to end today's Bible reading is Proverbs chapter 10, verses 8 and 9. The wise in heart accept commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading. I hope it touched your hearts. Now I'm going to go through our prayer requests from the prayer journal. They've been coloring the prayer tree. Okay, please keep the following people in prayer. My mom, Rhonda Karshner, for her knee and leg and the unspoken prayer request. It's for a good thing. Pray that it happens. Um, for sure still recovering from this COVID. For Layla and her son Emil, Layla has a lot of health problems. For Elizabeth Jeffries, she has a bad leg and pray that she stays safe because she's elderly and she lives alone and she's always falling. Um, for Judy Thompson, she has, a, she has gastroparesis like I do and she had a bad hernia and she is supposed to get surgery on that. I haven't heard from her so I don't know if she had that surgery or what's going on. Hopefully I'll hear from her soon. Please pray for our nephew Jimmy Myers. He's been having horrible nightmares. He's had them for a long time now and these severe headaches you know due to that malformation and um, the doctor's appointments I guess have been canceled because of the weather. So hopefully, uh, I think next week it might be one of his appointments. So if I learn anything new, I'll let you guys know. Please pray for him. Please pray for Cindy Welsh for her wheezing and coughing. And that she doesn't get this COVID. And that mom doesn't get this COVID. Please pray for Dora Carper. She's a widow and lives alone. And please pray for Joyce Light. I think she's a widow and she lives alone. Okay, so those are our prayer requests for now. And our verses that we're supposed to be practicing, we have two, remember. Psalm 84.10 Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. And Psalm 27, 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, this only do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord 
and to seek him in his temple. So those are the two we're to practice right now. And I'll eventually start adding some more on. I have one right now that I want to add on, but I'm going to give us a little while to get to, you know, memorize those two before I add it on. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.